Uh, and so the passage before us in Ephesians chapter number 2 is really a collection of extremes. And Paul seems to do this a fair amount in his writing. If you were to take time and look at Titus 3, you would find very similar wording and very similar extremes in that passage as well. Pastor's been preaching through the book of Romans. You would note the same exact and same style of extremes in that passage as well as you go through Romans 1, 2, and 3. And you get to Romans 3, 23, and everybody is hopeless. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then you learn of God's mercy and His grace and His forgiveness that He offers in Jesus Christ. The passage before us is no different. If you took time and if we were to study through the beginning of the chapter, you would see that man was in a hopeless condition. He was in a hopeless state. Verse number 1 says that you were dead in trespasses and sins. And beyond that, in verses 2 and 3, it tells us that we were living our lives in disobedience to God, following after our own lusts, following after the sins of this world. We were among the children of wrath. We were by nature children of wrath. You know, it's interesting to me in the book of Corinthians where it says that the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. You know, naturally, as we are born, the natural way and the natural tendency of our heart is not directed towards God. It's directed away from God. That is who we are naturally. The natural man, by nature, by our birth, we are children of wrath. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we were children of wrath. We were following after sin and following our own lusts. But it says in verse number four, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us. He, had, he has made us alive together with Christ. And from verses 4 down through verse number 10, we are given probably no better description anywhere else in the scripture of what God's salvation really entails. And as Paul moves into verse number 11, he wants us to remember something. He calls us to bring to our attention and to bring to mind something very specific. And in verse number 11, he says, Wherefore, remember that being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, and then he gives a description of who we were before we got saved. And what we'll see in verse 11 is for us not to forget where we came from. We have all seen or we've heard maybe of someone who comes from meager beginnings, from a very lowly state, and they make it big. You know, they become somebody. And they are reminded don't forget where you came from. And so as we plunge into this section, yes, we rejoice in the position and the situation that God has placed us in, but above all, we must not forget where he pulled us out of, from where he has lifted us out. The first thing that we see in this passage in verse 11 and 12 is the separation between us and God. In these two verses, in just two verses, Paul is going to use no less than seven terms to describe our detachment from God, which means that we were separated from God. You could understand it that we were at odds with God. We were in a fight with God. We didn't have peace with God. I don't know how I want to describe it to you. We were not on God's terms. We were not with God. We were completely detached and separated from Him. Paul wants us to make sure that we don't miss the point. We had no connection with God. There wasn't even a loose connection. It wasn't like kind of just hanging on. It was completely disconnected. There was no connection. And take it a step further, you had no hope of a connection with God. Your works were nothing to Him. They meant nothing to Him. You did not have a connection with God, and you had no hope of a connection with God. Let's read these two verses, and then we'll go through them slowly. Wherefore, remember that being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That leaves us pretty low. And as we go through it, I hope we'll realize how low we truly were, how far from God we were, detached, separated from God. 
the first thing that Paul says is, I want you to remember that in time past you were Gentiles in the flesh. If you know anything about the Jewish feelings toward the Gentiles around the time of Christ, and specifically around the time that Paul would have been writing, you would understand what that term meant. It was not a term of endearment. He said, you were Gentiles. You were not a part of God's people. He goes on in verse 11 to further the description. He says, you were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. It's another title that is affixed or placed upon those who are outside of the Jewish faith. But it incorporates more than just Gentiles. It will be seen later in this section, in the next verse. But circumcision was a part of the covenant between God and the Jewish people. It was the external right that said that I am a part of God's people. That I am one of God's people. It was the sign and the seal of that covenant that God made with Abraham. To say, you are now my chosen people. It was to show and to display that I am a part of the people of God. For the, the Gentiles, it means that they were outside of God's covenant. In verse number 12, it says that at that time, this is before you knew the Lord, that at that time ye were without Christ. In other words, you did not possess Christ or own him as your Lord and Savior. You were outside of Christ, which means that you were under God's wrath. And we're going to do some visual things this morning to help you understand, and it helps me to understand what, what Paul is trying to relate to us and what God is trying to convey. But if you can imagine a bubble, okay, here's a bubble. If you, can, if you can be with me on it. I know it's early. I know we're about to eat. This has nothing to do with food, so I'm not going to make you hungry. But, okay, here's a bubble, okay? If I'm inside the bubble, I'm in Christ, which means I'm under God's mercy. I'm experiencing his blessings, his favor, because God is supremely pleased with Jesus Christ. There's nothing in Christ, in Jesus Christ himself, that God says, no, I don't like that. That's not good. And so now that you are saved... Now that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are in Christ, which means God is supremely pleased with you. He looks at you as if you were the righteous Son of God. Not that you are the Son of God, you became one of His sons, one of His daughters, but, but that He looks at you with the righteousness of Christ stamped upon you. All right, so you are in Christ. You're in the bubble. Before you were in Christ, you were outside of the bubble, which means that instead of receiving God's blessings, Instead of realizing God's favor, you were under his wrath and his anger. He was mad at you. You were at odds with him. You were in a fight with him. You picked a fight with him because you've sinned, because you are a sinner. So you were under his anger. You were under his displeasure. Now that you are in Christ, you are under his favor. Do you see the difference? That, that is huge. So when you were without Christ, outside of Christ... You only experienced his judgment. Now that you are in Christ, you experience his blessing and his favor. And so at that time, Paul says, before you were saved, you were without Christ. You were outside of Jesus. You weren't in that bubble of favor. You were outside of it. He goes on to say, in verse number 12, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. It's the word foreigner, that you didn't belong. Again, you were outside of the people of God. You were a foreigner. You had no place among God's people. Let's use a second illustration. Let's imagine that we have a city that is surrounded by a large wall. Okay, and the gate is shut. The wall is high. This is the city of God's people. Imagine it that way. The idea of being a foreigner means that you're outside of that gate. You are outside of those walls. You have God's people... You are on the outside. You're a foreigner. You're a stranger. You have no place among them. That's what Paul is trying to paint the picture of. You have God's people here, and you are on the outside. You are not a part of God's people. He goes on to say in verse number, verse number 12, you are strangers from the covenants of promise. Now, as Gentiles, the vast majority of us here this morning are Gentiles. Although we're believers... It's hard to put the proper weight upon the covenants that God made with Israel. Many of those covenants have eternal ramifications. You have the Abrahamic covenant, 
Okay, that was made with Abraham, the father of the Jewish people. You have the Mosaic Covenant, again, falling under the Jews.